can you talk, so, so can we move on to like senescent cells? So I, I think, uh, we haven't really talked about senescent cells yet, but I think um, senescent cells seem to be one of the key drivers of the increase in CD38 as we age. Um, can you talk a little bit about the mechanism of, you know, why is the senescent cell driving this increase? Yeah, so just to introduce senescent cells. So senescent cells are cells that have gone every under um, essentially irreversible cell cycle arrest as a result of some type of stress or, for example, DNA damage. Um, and this is actually a beneficial thing since um, we don't want cells to have an accumulation of DNA damage to keep proliferating and turn into cancer cells. So um, what our bodies have done is a way to shut the, um, the proliferation, sorry, proliferation down in these cells. Mm. Um, the problem is that once you start accumulating um, what we call the, um, the senescent cells in our tissues um, is that um, one of the hallmarks of senescent cells is that they secrete lots of pro-inflammatory cytokines and as well as other um, proteins, which create kind of a, a very, um, which can be a source of chronic inflammation in our tissues. Um, so it's thought that senescent cells are um, a kind of a, a major source of inflammation during the aging process. Um, and, and sorry, and what was the question? And, so, and how does this affect CD38? Uh, yeah. How does this then lead to CD38 um, expression? Yeah, so what um, in our study, we had actually seen that there was an increase in CD38 macrophage accumulating in tissues. And what we wanted to see whether there, whether there was a connection to um, senescent cells. Um, and what we did first was to actually take senescent cells um, and grow them in, in the laboratory and then collect their, the conditioned media from these senescent cells and then pit that on macrophages. And what we saw was actually very similar to what we saw in vivo in that we saw that the macrophages were, were actually being activated and expressing really high levels of CD38. Okay. And so do we know why that is? What's actually causing that? Yeah, so that was something that we were really interested in, in investigating further. And, um, and what we, at least what, what we can tell is that it seems to be the pro-inflammatory cytokines that are being secreted from these senescent cells that is causing not only the macrophages to increase CD38, but we also saw another um, phenotype was that it was causing the macrophages to proliferate. So you were getting more macrophages. Um, so we, we, we thought that was actually very interesting. Um, and when we also looked at other genes in the macrophage, it, it appears that the macrophages are kind of um, becoming more M1-like macrophages. So this is the pro-inflammatory um, like state. Right. So, the, the, so one thing is you mentioned that there's some monocytes or macrophages that, that are going around in the blood, and then there's some that are kind of resident. Um, so do, do we think these are more macrophages that are kind of being called in to this, to the senescent cells or the, they're the kind of the resident ones that are growing? Yeah, so that was a question that we wanted to answer as well. So uh, we used different models to, to answer this question. So one was just the natural aging mice, so wild type mice that were, um, you know, young versus old. And what we saw was that, um, um, interestingly, that a lot of the macrophages that were expressing CD38 in aged tissues happened to be the resident macrophages. And, mm -hmm. um, so, and this is actually very surprising because um, pro-inflammatory macrophage accumulation um, in different tissues, like the fat tissue, um, and other states of chronic inflammation, such as such that occurs during obesity, tend to be the resident macrophage. So, we were actually really surprised by by this um, um, result because we expected the, the resident, sorry, the the monocyte derived macrophages from the blood to be the ones that are expressing CD38 and not the resident macrophage. But it was actually the right. There is. Yeah. So, so you looked at um, white adipose tissue, so fat, fat visceral fat, and uh, the liver, I believe, is, is the areas that you particularly looked at, which you, where you saw this kind of accumulation of senescent cells, and then uh, the increase in CD38 expression. Does this, do you think this is um, restricted to these tissue types, or would you see this happening across uh, the, the body more generally? Um, yes, I can only say definitively at the tissues that we looked at, which was, um, as you mentioned, the, the fat tissue or visceral fat, as well as in the liver. Um, 
but we hypothesize this perhaps is occurring in other tissues. Uh, so that's something that we want to investigate further, um, both in my lab, but as well as in the lab of um, my advisor, Dr. Eric Burdens. Right. Um, but we suspect perhaps this is something that may be occurring in the brain where you have lots of resident macrophages, which are called the microglia. Um, perhaps these cells are also expressing CD38 um, in aging during the aging process. But that's something that we're just starting to get into and haven't looked at um, too closely. Right. Okay. Because I'm, you know, I'm just trying to think. Uh, you know, obviously, one of the ways to reduce the CD38 expression is, is if it's in fat tissue, is where you have less fat, right? But mm -hmm. but if it's if it's across all tissues, then having less fat. Whereas it's a good thing, may, may not, in general, it's a good thing. I mean, it, it may not have a direct effect on the CD38. Um, yeah, I would say that there's, there's also different types of fat, um, mm -hmm. which we haven't um, explored. So most of our studies were done in visceral fat, which is the fat that's um, inside our bodies near our organs. Um, but we also have fat uh, such as sub-Q fat, which is the fat right underneath our skin. Um, so that was another type of fat that we looked at. We didn't put it in our study. But we showed that in the subacute, at least from our analysis of it, it didn't seem to be a tissue that was accumulating lots of CD38 with aging. Um, so it, it also depends on, um, yeah, what types of fat depot. Um, um, mm. so yeah, so there may be some different biology going on these different fat depots that we should look into further and, and try to understand why you see it in one but not the other. Right. Okay. Because, I mean, that would be interesting uh, to understand. If it if it's in visceral fat, then reducing the visceral fat would be a good thing. Um, so I believe in the paper you also. Oh, so one thing on senescent cells, right? So so these senescent cells are uh, secreting this pro-inflammatory uh, chemicals, which are causing CD thirty eight expression. So if we try to reduce senescent cells, right, that would be one kind of path that we could take. Do senescent cells have a function? I mean, if we could get rid of all of them, would that be a, a good thing? Yeah, so that's a really um, hot topic in the aging field that people are trying to, that's, that's a major question in, in the aging field that is being addressed currently. And there's different approaches that um, are being taken. So some, what, some approaches include senolytics, which are drugs that are, that hopefully will, um, will sp uh, specifically target um, senescent cells for apoptosis. Um, there's also another approach um, called xenomorphs, which will, it won't kill the cells, but it may cause um, the senescent cells to, uh, or suppress the inflammation or cytokine production in these senescent cells, which may also be beneficial as well. Um, so, um, but I, I think the current limitation right now is that we don't have any specific markers that, um, to help identify senescent cells. Um, there's um, sp specifically, so it's, it's really hard to target senescent cells specifically when we're, we're, tr we're still trying to identify a hallmark or function of them that could be their Achilles heel. Right. And I mean, but do you think it would be a good thing if we could eliminate them or, or um, do they serve a purpose? Um, well, I would say based on preliminary results using um, in, in labs that have used um, genetically engineered mice that have targeted senescent cells, there does seem to be um, beneficial effects um, where these Mice are aging, um, uh, essentially their, their health span, which is the mm. years where they seem to be healthier, seems to be um, improved. Um, so I would say, um, based on those results, that it, this may be a potential um, way that we, uh, therapeutic target to help us live longer um, and, and healthier. Uh, to reduce them. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.